All right, the first question I have that was emailed in for us is basically setting up a couple of orders here. And we also have a little screenshot. So we're gonna create a couple of order sets here. So uh, it's gonna be three contracts um, total. And the entry is gonna be a stop entry. And he would like it four ticks below the entry signal. So just, just to be clear, guys, you know, technically, an entry signal doesn't have a price, right? It's just an, it's an indication, so it's priceless, right? But David sent along this screenshot to help illustrate. Um, so here in the screenshot, we can see it says four ticks below the close. All right, so there we go. So we're gonna place a stop entry, four ticks below uh, the entry, the closing, yeah, I guess the close price, you know, of the bar, you know, of the of the entry signal. And um, let's see here. All right, so we have a stop loss um, is initially gonna be set 15 ticks out. And then, um, and then the stop losses are gonna move uh, five ticks, positive five, let's see, move, let's see, stop is gonna move. Oh yeah, so when, when there's five ticks of profit, so when, once the market moves, five ticks of profit, then our stop losses move to a negative 15 ticks. So the stop losses go from a 15 tick stop loss to a five tick stop loss. Uh, our profit target, number one here, is just gonna be a simple 10 tick profit target. When profit target one gets hit, which is gonna be at 10 ticks, then we wanna move our stop loss to break even plus two. And then we have our second stop loss is going to be 20 ticks. All right, so our first uh, profit target, I'm sorry, profit target number two, not stop loss, profit target number two is going to be 20 ticks. So profit target number one, right, we, are, we know that we have three contracts, so target one is going to be one contract, target two will be the second contract, and then the third contract is basically going to be a runner, so there's no profit target. And then that is gonna trail the parabolic SAR for the runner. All right, so let's get Blackbird up and running here. So Blackbird is a strategy. So we need to go into the strategies window here to get Blackbird up and running. All right, so we're gonna go into the Shark Indicators folder. And there is Blackbird. All right, so we're gonna add it to our list and uh, remember with strategies they have this extra setting here you always have to enable a strategy to get it up and running we just need to hit the enable and then click OK and then just wait a little moment all right there we go so now we have Blackbird up and running and so we're gonna use the order settings button here to open up Blackbird this is where we can do all of our work in the interface here all right, so let's pull this over here. Uh, three contracts, and they're going to be spread amongst two profit targets and a runner. So we're going to need three order sets here. All right, and so all the order sets are going to use a uh, stop entry four ticks uh, below. So this would be a sh for a short, four ticks below the close for a short, or four ticks above the close if it was a long a long trade. So in any case, our entry order, right? So when you start building an order set, the first thing you need to do is pick your entry order. So we know it's gonna be a stop entry. And there we go. So there's our entry order. And now we're gonna open this up and we can go in here and fine tune the initial placement, right? So it's not gonna be the close uh, uh, 10 takes away. So we're gonna open this up. It's actually gonna be the close, and we want it four ticks. There we go, so positive four ticks, all right, above the close, and it's a stop entry order. And so if it's a short trade, we can see here it uses negative four ticks, all right? So we're gonna take the close plus negative four ticks there. All right, so that's it, uh, pretty straightforward there for the entry order. And next step is we can move down here to the profit target. So it's just gonna be a simple 
10 tick profit target. So let's open up the profit target menu and there's a quick list there for us of 10 ticks. So we can just click on that. We're done. Uh, and now next we can start setting up the uh, stop losses here. Our stop loss is going to be uh, 15 ticks. So let's click the stop loss and we can use, um, kind of wondering if I should do the trailing. Nah, let's see, I'll just go with the 10 tick fixed here for, for the first profit target. And we're gonna adjust this stop loss down to a 15 tick, All right? So you can see that's a negative number. So negative 15 ticks, All right? And we are done for the stop loss. All right, so now we can, uh, let me just double check here. Oh yeah, actually we do need to move that stop loss once there is uh, five ticks of profit. We're gonna move that stop loss so that it is a five tick stop loss. So we're gonna go from a 15 tick stop loss to a five tick stop loss once the market has moved five ticks in a profitable direction. So let's open up this stop loss and we're going to go to the trailing actions tab now here and set the mode to custom all right and let's add a trailing rule and then let's give this a name here so so we're going to move our stop loss to basically negative five ticks um, at five ticks of profit here so to do that, we're going to open up the trigger here, the triggers. So, and we need to monitor when the market moves to five ticks of profit. And the easiest way to do that is to just use the uh, delay option here. And with the delay, we can enable ticks of movement. And we can see it already defaults to ticks of movement in a profitable direction. So Blackbird's going to monitor you know, um, the market, and if it moves five ticks in a profitable direction, then then that'll be our trigger event. Right? So we're gonna adjust the value here down to five ticks for five ticks of profit there. All right, so that's our trigger, waiting for the market to move five ticks in a profitable direction. And then the next step is the action. So we need to move that stop loss, uh, right? So we're gonna move that stop loss to, so we can open up this menu. And so we're gonna take the entry price, right? So we're gonna take the entry price and then set this to a negative five ticks, right? So for a long trade, five ticks below the entry price. Right. So if you remember, the initial stop order price, right, is the entry price minus 15 ticks, right? So the stop loss starts off at a 15 tick stop loss. And then with the trailing rules here, we're going to move that stop loss to the entry price, but then only minus five ticks. So it becomes a five tick stop loss. All right. And of course, that in this movement only happens once, right? You can market's only going to move to five ticks of profit one time, so there's no repeat on this. This is just a one-time movement of your stop loss, right? So there is our trailing rule here, and so next we can move on to um, target two here, profit target two. So our second order set, right? So we need to create a, a second order set to have a different profit target. Right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy A, right? So we copied order set A over here. And so that sets up our entry order, right? So stop, uh, that's close. So we're gonna take the closing price plus four ticks for a stop entry. Right, so everything's been copied over. And so now we can go into the profit target and adjust this profit target 
so that it is now a 20 tick profit target. All right, so there we go. So order set A is a 10 tick profit target. Order set B is a 20 tick profit target. And now we can go into the stop loss and we now have this, um, you know, at 10 ticks of profit, we're gonna move the stop loss to break even plus two. So we can now put that trailing rule into our stop loss. Now, there's, there's two ways we can do this, right? Because if you notice, our first profit target is a 10 tick. So we could either use the delay and just look for the market to move, um, yeah, or yeah, use the, the delay here. Actually, let me just start a new trailing rule here. So actually, sorry, we're gonna move this stop loss to break even plus two at 10, 10 ticks of profit there. To, to monitor this 10 ticks of profit, there's two ways we can do this. So the one way is we can use the order status changed here because our first profit target is a 10 tick profit target. So if you want this break even to wait until the first profit target is filled, then we can use this order status changed, right? And we can monitor, right, the profit target for A, right? So A is order set A and we can wait for this profit target to get filled. So that could be our trigger mechanism, or we could use the delay here. And again, I could just use this ticks of movement and it's already set to 10 ticks. So we can just wait till the market moves 10 ticks of profit. And so this actually isn't gonna wait for that, that profit target to get filled, All right? So there's two ways we could do this. So I guess this would be a little more liberal, just waiting for the market to move 10 ticks, um, right? Because even though the market moves 10 ticks, it doesn't mean your target's gonna get filled, uh, it, right? It depends on how many orders are sitting in front of your target, you know, waiting to get filled first uh, before your target gets hit, right? So um, Blackbird could pick up the fact that the market had moved 10 ticks before your target gets filled, right? Or maybe the market moves up, touches your target, but never fills it and then backs off. And so if we use the order status changed, right? That's gonna wait for your target to get filled before moving to break even, right? So this this is, using the order status change would be a, a, a more conservative approach. Um, and using the ticks of movement would be a little more liberal approach. So we'll just use uh, ticks of movement there for that. So now we need, all right, so there's our plus uh, 10 ticks, all right, of profitable market movement. And so now we need to put in the break even plus two part. All right, so, so we're gonna go to the action column here and in the move to break even is your entry price right so break even is just a fancy way of saying entry price moving your stop loss to, to the entry price and then we're going to add two ticks right pretty straightforward so entry price plus two tick is what a break even is and so again a break even is a one-time action so there's no repeat. So we're just gonna leave the repeat um, alone there for that. And let's see here. And that is it. Yeah, that's it for the stop loss for our second profit target. And so our third contract, since it's a runner, it's gonna trail the parabolic SAR there. All right, so let's go and create our our third contract here. So we'll copy B, right? So you'll notice each of these order sets is one contract each, right? So this number up here in the top left is the number of contracts. Uh, basically, think of it as a number of contracts per profit target, right? So the main reason why uh, Ninja's ATM 
you know, and of course, um, you know, basically any kind of trading platform, you know, the reason why you have these different order sets is because that's how you denote different profit targets. All right, so our third contract is a runner, so we're going to delete that profit target. There we go. So that profit target's gone. And so next, we just need to go into the stop loss and add our parabolic SAR trailing. There we go. So we're going to trail the, the parabolic SAR. Now, we don't want to just trail a parabolic SAR right away, right? We want to wait for this break even to happen first. And this break even happens when there's 10 ticks of, of profit, right? So we're going to go into the trigger and use the delay mechanism again right and enable the ticks of movement and this time we'll set this up to 11 ticks right so there we go so our runner here the you know trailing the parabolic SAR is going to wait until 11 ticks of movement by the market here right so we have so the the stop loss it's going to move to it's going to move itself to a five tick stop loss when there's five ticks of profit. Then it'll move to break even plus two when there's 10 ticks of profit. And then it's going to trail the parabolic, parabolic SAR. I guess I should put this in the name here at, you know, 11 ticks of profit. There we go. So now we kind of have everything spelled out in the name there. Kind of helps, helps us understand what's going on. All right, so um, we have our trigger set, you know, to wait for 11 ticks of profit. So now we need to go into the action, and we're going to move our stop loss to, and instead of price, right, we're not going to use bar prices here. You know, we're going to use an indicator value this time, All right? And so we just need to select the parabolic SAR indicator. So let's, let's see, scroll down here. And there's our parabolic SAR. And just remember if you're using any kind of custom settings here to adjust your indicator settings. And the parabolic SAR only has one plot, so it's already selected for us, so there's nothing to do there. And then if you want, you can add an offset, you know, so if you want, you can go one tick below the parabolic SAR or one tick above the parabolic SAR, you know, whatever you might want for a little additional offset, but we're just going to leave it at zero, no offset. And so this time, this trailing um, is going to be a continuous trailing, um, right, until the stop loss gets hit. So this time on the repeat, we're actually going to open up the repeat here, and we want this trailing roll to repeat indefinitely uh, once per bar, right? Remember the the indicators update, you know, one time per bar, so we're just going to repeat this once per bar, and that will continuously move the stop loss up with the parabolic star. So, and that does it. All right, so we're all done with this one. Yeah, so a question on the parabolic SAR here. All right, so the question is, all right, so this this runner contract, right? It's gonna it's gonna move to a five tick, and then it's gonna move the break even, and then it's gonna start trailing the parabolic SAR. So what happens if the parabolic SAR? And let's see if we actually have a screenshot here. Um, yeah. So I think the white dots is probably the parabolic SAR. Yes, it is. There we go. So the white dots are the parabolic SAR. So what happens if, um, you know, so our stop loss is at break even here, right? But the parabolic SAR is, you know, um, so this is a short trade, right? So the parabolic SAR is basically behind our stop loss. So if our stop loss moves to break even plus two, but the parabolic SAR is behind it, then what happens? Uh, well, nothing happens. So um, just keep in mind, guys, that by default, 
Blackbird is not going to move your stop losses backwards. All right. So if you set up some kind of trailing rule or use some kind of indicator that is behind your stop loss, Blackbird's not going to move your stop loss backwards. All right. The whole point of stop losses is to lock in profit, not increase your risk. Right. So if if you move your stop loss backwards, right, you're increasing the your risk. You're increasing your loss potential. And so Blackbird is not going to do that, right? All stop losses, uh, or the whole point of having a stop loss, is to keep moving your stop losses forward, locking in more and more profits. And so by design, by default, stop losses in Blackbird behave the same way. They're not going to move backwards, right? So in order to get your stop loss to move backwards, you actually have to disable a couple of things in Blackbird to do that. So you have to intentionally uh, override Blackbird to get your stop losses to move backwards. Um, and so one of those things, the main setting here, is if you go into the risk management, right? And so what is a stop loss? A stop loss is managing your risk, um, right? So when you move your stop loss to break even, you know, plus two, right? You took out all the risk of that trade. Right, it's the whole point of moving your stop loss to, to, to break even. So if you want your stop loss to move backwards, well, that, that is a risk management. And so you actually have to enable allow widening of your stop loss. Right. So if you want your stop loss to move backwards, right, basically your stop loss is widening, moving away from the market price. Right. So you have to allow that to get your stop losses to move backwards. And then, so let's undo that first. And then secondly, in the action, you have to, the allow movement, you have to override this as well. So you have to go in here and set this to like both directions to allow your stop loss to tighten or to widen, right? So there's two settings there that you always have to override um, to get your stop losses to move backwards. Right, so basically, when this trailing roll, right, once the trigger is hit, right, so once the market moves 11 ticks, you know, in a profitable direction, if your parabolic SAR hasn't surpassed your stop loss, then your stop loss just sits there and it waits for the indicator to catch up, right? So, yeah, so Blackbird's not going to move your stop loss backwards. Um, back to the indicator so you don't have to worry about that so nicholas is asking could you repeat the parabolic sar with every tick uh yes you can however your parabolic sar is not going to update with every tick um all right your parabolic you know indicators are going to update you know when the bar closes um so but if you do want to use an indicator that updates on a tick by tick basis, well, you have to, NinjaTrader says that you have to change the calculation mode for Blackbird. So if you want to do that, you have to go back into your strategy settings here. And with Blackbird, let's see here, I'm going to have to disable it temporarily. And you have to change the calculate mode of Blackbird, right, to update on each tick or on price change there. Yeah, so if you want your parabolic SAR to move in real time, you have to tell Blackbird to update in real time as well. So NinjaTrader does not allow you to mix and match the calculate mode, right? So all the indicators, um, all what what's called guest indicators, right? So since we're using the parabolic SAR inside of Blackbird, right? The parabolic SAR is what's called a guest indicator being used by Blackbird. So if you want your guest indicators to update in real time, you have to change the calculate mode of the host software. So Blackbird would be the host and the parabolic SAR would be the guest indicator, right? So all the guest indicators follow whatever the calculate mode is of the host. 
and NinjaTrader does not allow you to mix and match between those two. And then, going back to our stop loss, we can go into the repeat, and then we could change the repeat to ticks of movement there. So it takes a movement in a profitable direction. Let's open that up a little bit. There we go. There. So, but since Blackbird's calculate mode is on bar close, you know, setting this to ticks of movement, setting your repeat to ticks of movement, it's not going to have any effect. Because Blackbird's only, or I should say the Parabolic SAR is only going to update when the bar closes because that's Blackbird's calculate mode. So you might as well just leave this on bars.